Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to uh, visualize prediction errors and compare algorithms um, uh, so for machine learning. So in the previous tutorial, um, what we did is we established a train test split um, for a data, a data set called the SA Heart data. We read that into R using data table F read. We converted that into a scaled input matrix. And then we use the nearest neighbor um, class KNN function in R to compute some predictions. So now what we're going to do is we're going to refactor this code so we can get um, some prediction error metrics for all of those folds that um, that we uh, we talked about earlier, right? So so we set up a, a five-fold cross-validation experiment. We said n folds it gets five. And so uh, what we did here is we just assume that test fold is always equal to one, and then we compute the error prediction error for test fold equal to one. So what if we wanted to do that for all of the five test folds, uh, all of the five fold IDs? So in, instead of having test fold always equal to one, here we can say test, we can create a for loop and set for test fold in one to n folds. Right, so then we're going to get a for loop, and every iteration of the for loop is going to be a different um, test uh, test fold and a different machine learning model prediction. So, so let's uh, let's do that. And so, what we're going to do now is um, so instead of just directly executing this code, we have to start thinking about how are we going to store the result at the end of that for loop. So. What do we want to do? We, well, if we want to visualize the prediction error of that particular machine learning model, what we want to save is like, say, the average uh, error or the average accuracy, right? So here, last time we corrected, we comp computed is pred error here. We can uh, equivalently say, um, you know, we could compute the prediction accuracy, or maybe you know, accuracy percent. Accuracy percent would be, you know the mean of pred int equals y test times 100, right, if we want to do, get a percent. So um, typically when we save results in for loops and we want to visualize them uh, in our, I'm, I'm going to use this uh, list of data tables idiom. So it's pretty simple. Every time uh, it has the same kind of pattern, before your for loop, what you have to do is you have to initialize a, li a list. So let's say pred um, metric or pred accuracy, pred accuracy DT list. So it's going to be a list of data tables. We initialize it as an empty list. And so what we're going to do at every iteration of this for loop is we're going to assign something to this list. So here I'm going to use a double square brackets to assign one of the elements of that list. Here I'm going to use test fold as the index, which is going to vary between one and five. And the thing that I'm going to assign, it's going to be a data table. And what it's going to do is it's going to store the test fold ID and it's going to store the this accuracy percent value. Yeah. And so when I go through this for loop, so if I just execute this one line, well, accuracy percent not found, let's try to execute that line to keep that thing. So if I just executed just that one iteration for the test fold one that we were looking at before. So let's see what that looks like. Well, it looks like it's a list of one data table with one row and two columns. And so it's going to store for every test fold what is the corresponding accuracy percent. So let's execute that for loop and let's see what happens. So at the end of the for loop, what we get is we get this um, this list of five data tables. Each has one row and two columns. And it tells us what was the accuracy for that particular test fold. So to get um, to get those results all combined, there's a, you know the end of this idiom is um, pred ac dt gets do call r bind pred ac dt list. So what that's going to do the r bind function 
that what it does it's binding rows the R means rows and so it's binding each one of these together in terms of rows you could think about gluing these guys together kind of just like sticking uh, them on top of each other right that's what the R bind is doing so when we do that we get this new object called pred act dt and so this is a one data table with five rows and it tells you for every test fold what is the corresponding accuracy percent so uh, just to summarize this idiom really quickly you know here we have um, the the test fold um, for loop so what where we're doing some for, for loop over uh, over different train that test splits. Before the for loop, we have to initialize an empty list. At the end of the loop, after we've computed our machine learning predictions, we have to assign a data table as an element of that list. So here, I'm using the double square brackets to assign the one element of that list we initialized. Then finally, at the end of the for loop, we use this do call r bind on that list to get a data table of uh, results. And so why is that interesting? Well, that's interesting because it, it'll let us compare um, uh, compare different predictions. So um, for example, in the last screencast, we mentioned that you know we probably don't get very good predictions if we're not scaling the data. Here we scaled the data so that all of the columns have mean zero and standard deviation one. So what if we did that nearest neighbors classification without doing that scaling step? What would happen? So let's find out and let's compute the test error of that other classifier. Let's see, so um, what happens is, uh, in here we computed X train, um, and Y train based on, um, well, yeah, we computed X train based on X dot SC. So what if we did another um, comparison using X um, mat, which is the unscaled version of the set? So how would we implement that? So let's let's try it. So um, so you see that XSC appears two times, so we'd have to replace that both times. So to avoid repetition, what I'm going to do is for, um, let's, let's make a list here. How about data list is list scaled equals x dot sc, unscaled equals x dot mat. And so what I'm going to do here is so this data list well, it's going to be a list of two data tables. Um, the first, the you know, the first one is going to be the scaled version of the data that we just used to train the machine learning algorithm. The second one is the unscaled version that we just used, uh, that we want to use to compare against. And so, what we're going to do is then an internal for loop over these data sets to to do the comparison. So let's do it. So for, um, how about uh data name in names data list. So that's going to be either scaled or unscaled, that data name variable. So here, let's take these guys and put, well, actually, let's put all of this stuff inside of the for loop now. And let's um, here instead of using x.sc all the time, let's use let's call let's have a new data data x you know, data list data name data x. How about that? And here that data x is going to be defined as one of those elements of the data list, either the scale or unscaled, depending on the current value of data name, right? So now when we execute this, it's going to compute what are the predictions using either the scaled or the unscaled version of the data. And now here, the, the only thing we have to modify here is at the out bottom of our list, here it's, it's only assigning an element that's specific to the test fold. So we want, now we're going to be doing something for every test fold and for every data name. So what we can do now is we can use paste test fold data name. That will give a unique name for every unique co combination of test fold and data name. And so here we can also add data name 
as one of the columns that we're storing in our uh, prediction accuracy data table list. And so now when we do this, let's take a look at those values. So executing that for loop and then combining the results gives us a data table that looks like this. So here, now instead of having one entry just for every test fold, now we have two entries for every test fold, one for the scaled and one for the unscaled version. And so you can see pretty clearly that um, in almost every case, you get a better prediction accuracy when you scale your data rather than unscale. It's actually quite surprising here that you get a better accuracy when you're not scaling in, in test fold number four. So um, that's, uh, that's the list of data tables idiom. And you know one of the reasons why we use that is for visualization, and we'll see that in the next tutorial.